common sense conservatives will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. This prime minister is not worth the cost. Indeed, his carbon tax, which the parliamentary budget officer has proven, costs 60 percent of Canadians more than they get back in rebates, is now opposed by 70 percent of Canadians. Everybody understands that the tax is driving people to the food bank. That's why six premiers, including the Liberal Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, have asked for a meeting. Will he agree to a televised carbon tax conference if he's so sure of himself on this issue? Lord, the Right Honourable Prime Minister. The parliamentary budget officer has confirmed that 8 out of 10 families across the country get more money with the Canada carbon rebate uh, attached to the price on pollution than it costs them. That's $1,800 arriving for a family of four in Alberta. It's thousands of dollars right across the country. These are things that are helping people with the high cost of living and groceries at the same time as we fight climate change. But Mr. Speaker, uh, what would be also helpful is if we were able to deliver the doubling of the rural top-up to put hundreds of dollars in the pockets Very of Canadians, good. but the Conservative oh. Party is blocking the legislation to double the rural top-up. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, that is mathematically impossible that given that the NDP Liberal government has a combined majority and can pass That's anything right. it wants, which is exactly why we're in such a mess today yeah. as a country. After eight years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost, and that's why the Parliamentary Budget Officer confirms 60 per cent of Canadians are paying more in carbon taxes than getting back in rebates. But why doesn't the Prime Minister, if he believes the contrary, why doesn't he have the courage to sit down in a televised and open forum and have a carbon tax conference with the Premier? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. We did sit down with the Premiers eight years ago and established the Pan-Canadian Framework on Climate Change that both puts a price on pollution and puts more money back in the pockets out of eight of ten Canadian families in the jurisdictions where the federal backstop applies. That is a way of both fighting climate change and helping with affordability. Now, not only are the Conservative Party uh, counting on pulling away, taking away those Canada carbon rebate checks, uh, they're arriving this coming Monday on April 15th. People will see in their bank accounts the Canada carbon rebate that puts more money in their pockets ahead of uh, the costs associated associated with fighting climate change. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, he met the Premiers in 2016. Since that time, he's broken the promise he made them. He said the tax would only go up to 11 cents a litre. Now, he admits it will go up to 61 cents a litre. He said the tax would make people better off. Now we have the Parliamentary Budget Officer's report, which confirms 60 per cent of Canadians pay more than they get back. The Prime Minister said, and I quote in 2015, Canadians need a PM who will meet with the Premiers. What happened? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. While the Conservative leader continues with his misinformation and disinformation, the reality is the Parliamentary Budget, budget Officer uh, said that 8 out of 10 Canadians do better with our price on pollution and the Canada carbon rebate. But speaking of misinformation and disinformation, any responsible leader uh, that receives an endorsement and support from proven conspiracy theorist and liar Alex Jones would have immediately denounced that. But that's not what the leader of the opposition did, he did absolutely nothing because those kinds of endorsements fit within his political strategy. The Honourable Member for Belleau Chambly. Speaker, uh, the incoming leader of the Liberal Party has just given a speech and given advice 
to his soon-to-be predecessor, he said that he agrees, this is Mark Carney, says he agrees that there should be a carbon tax conference where the premiers can come together and share their concerns about the Prime Minister raising the cost of living and breaking the back of Canadians. Will the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister won't listen to me, he won't listen to the Liberal Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, will he at least listen to his successor and meet the premiers on the carbon tax? Honourable Minister for Natural Resources. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Again, it is important for folks, for Canadians who are watching this debate, to be careful about the misinformation being spewed by the leader of the opposition. It is important for a responsible government in this country to have a plan for addressing climate change and do so in a manner that enhances and addresses affordability concerns. That is exactly what the price on pollution does. Eight out of ten Canadian families get more money back. Two hundred economists across the country agree with us. It is such a shame that we have a bunch of climate deniers over there who have no plan for the environment and no plan for the economy. I ask all members please to uh, only take the mic, uh, only take the floor when they're recognized by the Speaker. I'll recognize the Honourable uh, Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, uh, Mark Carney, uh, who is the next Liberal leader, is a fierce supporter of the carbon tax. He's been called carbon tax Carney in the past, and he is willing at least to defend his carbon tax views in front of the Premiers. The Prime Minister is not. He's running for cover and hiding from Canadians, he's gone. refusing to defend his own policy decisions. If the Prime Minister is really so proud of his plan to hike the carbon tax to 61 cents a litre, why won't he listen to Mark Carney and have a big, open, televised carbon tax conference? Minister for Natural Resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's very interesting that the leader of the opposition seems so uh, so fond of Mark Carney these days, who actually, as you say, does believe in a price on pollution. Perhaps the leader of the opposition should listen to him. But it is important with respect to the premiers to know that the premiers have every right to submit a plan that actually meets the federal benchmark and put in place their own price on pollution. That is something that British Columbia has done. That is something that Quebec has done. Mr. Speaker, Premier Mo was actually here recently and, and testified before the committee. And what Premier Mo said is, we looked at alternatives to the price on pollution and found every one of them to be too expensive. expensive. This from a guy who has no climate plan, no. The honourable member from Thornhill. Thornhill. Last week, the Prime Minister increased the carbon tax by 23 per cent on Canadians, on gas, on groceries, on home heating. He's doubling down and defying 70 per cent of Canadians and eight premiers who want him to axe the tax. Six of those premiers wrote the Prime Minister asking for a meeting to talk about his punishing carbon tax. Instead, the Prime Minister just shot down the idea because they already had a meeting eight years ago. Can the Prime Minister tell us how many premiers he met in 2016 that are still in power today. The Honourable Minister for Families and Social Development. Mr. Speaker, actions speak more than words. Our actions on this side of the House, over 750,000. I'm going to ask the uh, Honourable Minister to start again because the Chair sincerely could not hear. Uh, what the minister was saying. The Honourable Minister for Families, Children and Social Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I said, actions speak louder than words. On this side of the House, our actions, over 750,000 families benefiting from affordable childcare spaces, over 100,000 new spaces across the country, 7 million children whose parents benefit from the Canada Child Benefit, a national school food policy. Their actions, Mr. Speaker, vote against funding to increase the number of spaces, vote against a national school food policy, Mr. Speaker. They've made it clear they're not there for Canadian families. 
The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, I don't know if she missed the question, but Canadians certainly missed the answer. It's zero. 2016 is the last time he had a meeting. Pokemon Go, dabbing, Harambe, that's what was popular in 2016. And you can get an apartment for half the price. Since the last time the Prime Minister had a meeting with the Premiers, gas and groceries have skyrocketed, and interest rates have increased 10 times over. So will he put aside his desperation and defiance, do some work around here, and meet the Premiers? Yeah. 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 The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Speaker, what Canadians will see today is one thing they will not hear from these Conservatives, Mr. Speaker, is the cost of inaction, the cost of forest fire, Mr. Speaker, the cost of flooding in our country, the cost of drought, Mr. Speaker. When each of these Conservatives are standing up, they're telling Canadians they have no plan, Mr. Speaker, to fight climate change. On this side of the House, we recognize, like all Canadians, we need to act to save the planet. We need to act climate change. That's why we're going to invest in Canadian. That's why we're going to continue to invest to make sure that we have a planet to live for our children. The Honourable Member for Louis Laurent. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal government, housing has never been in such a sorry state. Rents have doubled, mortgages have doubled. And what's this government's strategy? To have a photo up. They always have an announcement with a photo up. But yesterday, they, reached, they breached new grounds. Yesterday, the Prime Minister did a photo up on a roof. But that doesn't help Canadians put a roof over their heads. What is the government's plan to help Canadians who can't find a roof for uh, their head? The Honourable Minister for Public Works and Government Services. As we said, uh, there are two clear figures, six and eight thousand. As his ma during his mandate. As a housing minister, there were six affordable housing units built. We uh, made an announcement that will create 42 new housing units. That means that in his riding, we have created seven more housing units than his uh, leader did during his mandate as housing minister. The honorable member for just one second. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent from the top. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to tell my Honourable colleague that I know what happens in my writing and that, yes, people are finding it hard to make ends meet. Yes, inflation is, ta is hitting people hard. And yes, this government is just spending without control. And that is adding fire to the flames of inflation. Mr. Speaker, the member, who is a minister as well, who is a well-respected uh, academic, how will he explain to his future students that a budget can balance itself, like the Prime Minister keeps claiming? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague. I respect him. First of all, Austerity is not a solution in 2024. The second thing I have to say is that respect is the foundation of academic relations. And that is true everywhere in Canada. I would like him to apologize to Quebec, to Quebec City, because he called the leaders of Quebec City incompetent, which is a shambles.